Rodri, congratulations. Another huge victory for Manchester City. You're now in pole position for a fourth consecutive title. Just how significant is this win? It's unbelievable. I mean, for us, giving us the chance to fight again in the last, last game, we know it's still one more game. But uh, the effort we did it today was incredible. We showed the character of the team. Of course, it wasn't our best performance, but we came here to win. That's what we do. And the mentality of these guys, the substitution, I want to talk about today, the substitutions. Uh, Stefan, they, he saved us. Jeremy was unbelievable. All the players that came in was exceptional. This talks about the team. I mean, ultimately, it was Erling Haaland's two goals that has won you that tonight. But when you're talking about mentality, that save by Stefan Ortega, how do you sum his performance up? This is football, the areas. I think we have the best strike in the world. And to me, today, he made the difference. The people talk about him, but today, the team needed two goals. And Stefan was just simply incredible. We were 1-0 up. If they draw, we were out. So, outstanding three saves. I cannot I have no words. Of course, Eddie was a bit frustrated, but the substitution makes sense because he had a concussion. But, I mean, what's this? This is something we can do history again, but we have one more effort. Yes, one more effort. Just one home victory now against West Ham. Standing in your way. That title, it must feel like touching distance away now. Well, we have the experience of Aston Villa. Of course, we know it's not done. We know that it's going to be tough. Uh, but with our people, with our crowd, uh, we need their support because we, we need the last effort. And if we do it, we, we can change the history. Right, well, best of luck on Sunday for now. Enjoy those celebrations. Well done. And he personally, 49 Premier League games unbeaten now, Rodri. Uh, only Sol Campbell in Premier League history can better that, which is some statistic. Um, he made a good point there, though. The Aston Villa game, uh, when Gundogan came off the bench, they've been here before. They know how difficult it is. Everyone expects them to beat West Ham. It's no given. Not thinking football or in the Premier League, for that matter, is ever given. Wherever you are, whether it's top versus bottom, we've seen it happen over the years, whether it's something big on the table or not, that they're going to go there and try and win a game. They don't want to lose it either. So unless City come with the same mentality they had in the Spurs game and probably play to the way we know they can, then they should win the game. But they have to be at it. They can't come thinking they're going to going to win a game and I think that's kind of the point Roger was making they all have been there before they had the Villa game they were 2-0 down before they knew it and had to claw it back in the last 15 minutes so they won't want that to happen again No If there was ever a group of players you'd be confident about not having an off day in that scenario it would be this bunch though wouldn't it? Yeah I think when you play let's say a, a, a lesser team an inferior team to, to yourselves then sometimes complacency can kick in of course it can but when the prize is so big, when you've worked so hard for so long, um, when you've had to go to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and win, I'd be very, very surprised if they took their foot off the pedal now. Um, this team have been there, they've seen it, they've done it, under the greatest of pressure. One-off games is their forte as well. Um, you know, West Ham have got nothing to play for, they'll be relaxed, yes, but it's too big a game for this group of players. They're too good of players to let it slip now. That was what many people saw as the big one. If they won that, then they were going to go, you know, go all the way. You said it, they've got one hand on the, on the title now. And um, yeah, I'd be absolutely astonished. But, you know, as you both touched on, we've seen it before. I mean, they were very close to, to uh, losing out against QPR when the great Aguero goal rescued them. And that would have been even more of a surprise than West Ham going there. So it's happened before. Things can happen with pressure. But I'd be very surprised now. And you'd have two Premier League battles if that hadn't happened. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, in, in terms of the adrenaline, you could see that from, from Rodri there. They, they knew tonight was the night, didn't they? To, to keep their destiny in their own hands and in control of the situation. Yeah, I think the telling point was, you see, when Doku got the penalty, the, his celebration and reaction after that where he celebrated as if it was already a goal sort of thing but he knew how much that's they needed that second goal and to do it the way they've done it at a place where they've effectively struggled to score we in hindsight we didn't see them create that many clear-cut chances or have that many shots from outside the box as they normally do they they were very cautious they kind of played that game in many ways like an away champions league game where they didn't want to make too many stakes and they was patient in terms of trying to wait for that right opportunity to open. And I think Doku coming on changed the game because 
he gave them that little bit of that unexpected where Spurs don't know what he's going to do and City kind of just play off of what he does and see what he comes out with, especially when he goes to the byline. And that is something they needed in that game for me. Mm. You don't want to remember the Aguero moment. Julian Lescott always does. Uh, he's, uh, of course, alongside Manise tonight for us back at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, gents. As soon it's not as you about me, Steve. It's not about me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you mention Sergio Aguero moment, you can't yeah. help but smile, can oh, you? Of course not. Um, still chills, and I think it was yesterday, the day yeah. of that goal. But yeah, it's not about that era. It's, not, it's about this team now, and they deserve all the plaudits they get because they're on the verge of making history. So let's talk about tonight, Julian. I mean, they cr- they kind of pretty frustrated bench, actually, with Pep Guardiola at half-time. But this is Manchester City, isn't it? And we, we shouldn't be surprised by this. If they don't score early and then build on it, they will eventually grind you down. Oh, definitely. And um, they showed that um, different factors of their character, like, like Rodri was saying. Obviously, the first half was probably an even kill, pl- slightly frustra- uh, frustrated for, from City's point of view, but second half, it was domination. Um, again, that, that Spurs had some chances, but the tempo, Bernardo Silva, Guardio, they, they all played their part. And as I said, when you've got someone like Harlan and, and, and Kevin De Bruyne who have a telepathic understanding, um, there's always opportunities there. The role of the substitutes. Oh, Stefan Ortega, can you massive, talk to me about that? Massive contribution, arguably one of the, the most impactful um, contributions any subs had this season. Daku as well, obviously got the pen, but Ortega, that save from, from Sun when the, when the game is at 1-0, uh, will go down as, as one of the, the pivotal moments of the season. Well, we must forget the one on Kuliseski was pretty decent as well. Yeah, again, I think he'd just come on, but again, here's the man. Here's here the he man. is, Erling. two-goal hero, Erling Haaland. <laughs> Erling, very many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. How did you look back at that performance tonight? difficult uh, a lot of emotions and uh, there's nothing much to say there's one more game and uh, relax focus and uh, and believe in ourselves do you feel like you've got one hand on the trophy no one more game as I said focus now go home relax enjoy nothing more what was the message focus. in the in the dressing room um, from from the manager one more yeah don't think now relax and then we go against Sunday so no wild celebrations in the dressing no, 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 room right no, no. now don't celebrate yet. Yeah. Talk, talk us through Stefan Ortega's performance and yeah, contribution. It's, it's incredible. Uh, he, he's so good uh, <laughs> yeah. and he's such a good guy as well. Uh, proper German, so uh, so uh, <laughs> no, he's a great guy. And look at this. I think you have to go. Uh, I think you have to go Euros now as well because he's uh, he's so good and so important. Yeah, how big was that save yeah, it's, against it's Son? Incredible! It's incredible. And not only him, Edison as well had some good ones. Don't yeah. forget that. But Ortega ones. I take a one in the moment and everything. Almost got a heart attack, to be honest. So talk, talk us through your, your mindset <laughs> in the penalty. How calm was think, you? How nervous? Or I, I thought, yeah. At the moment, my, you my heart was beating so quick. Uh, but <laughs> I told Ruben when we were standing there, I'm so tired, and I think also <laughs> that's why uh, I didn't think. It's the first time I didn't think, uh, and uh, just about getting the ball in the back of the net, and that's what I did. And um, yeah. I did the job and now it's one more game, so focus. You said your heart was beating. Nerves? Yeah, people talk about that they don't feel on any nerves and they want to be calm and uh, all of this in the interview, uh, but it's not true, don't worry. Uh, everyone feels on it. You played football yourself, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everyone felt it today in the game. Everybody was so nervous, uh, but we did the job and uh, look forward now don't think more about the game yeah uh, your reaction at the full time whistle was quite telling Erling actually um, you were just <coughs> saying one one more to go let's, let's not get too carried away and just exactly what Pep said to you in the dressing room just now yeah as I said now many times don't think uh, don't celebrate or anything uh, we're gone we've played 37 games now so uh, it's a marathon so um, focus on the next one yeah and also your goal return in your two seasons in the Premier League 63 it's the most of anybody in the Premier League era in their first two campaigns still one more to go as well. st- and can, maybe a hat trick again it can get higher I mean early could you have ever imagined it would turn out this way for you I knew that a striker for City should score a lot of goals but again, I don't, honestly, I don't care anything about this. I don't care how we win, just win. Uh, as I said, I don't... OK, it's that's OK, but again, I don't care. Yeah. Win the next game. Yeah. Look, listen, well done tonight. Thank and you thanks guys. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. See you. Erling Haaland for you, Steve. Brilliant. And he's, uh, he's a team man, even though he's after those individual records, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's very much one more win and...
we've done it. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first priority, isn't it? I mean, he does care about the numbers as well, let me assure you. <laughs> um, but he absolutely cares mostly about the team and, and trying to win the trophy and, and, uh, and his goal is obviously going to be a huge contribution to that. So um, you've got to do your individual performance before you can contribute to the team, of course. And that's what he's certainly been doing. I mean, was it 63 or something goals in his two seasons so far with another 63 game? 63 and 65 Premier League games. Yeah. And as he says, I mean, you, do, you are expected to in, in that Manchester City team. You are getting more chances than virtually anyone else in the league. However... Um, the way he's finished them, the way you know, the way he stayed fit for the majority of those two years, you know, under pressure, he's he's a machine, isn't he? The size of him, the presence of him, he's he's just a bit of everything, and he must be a nightmare to to uh, to, vet, to defend against. And this is his first goal in 51 minutes. You know, might have been a little bit edgy going in at half time, but those nerves were soon settled in the uh, in the second half I mean it's good play by Foden down the, the left hand side and then again we mentioned didn't we at half time the way they were doubling up on that right hand side De Bruyne makes a lovely little run I thought Romero was soft here and I never thought I'd say that about him Sean yeah. I mean he could easily have, have, have smashed Phil Foden there and, and, and snuffed out the danger <laughs> yeah and, and also there Benton Core should have put a tackle in but he's on a yellow so he can't and Kevin makes his trademark running behind and the, the ball's just in between a goalkeeper and a defence where you always want the ball put from a winger's perspective for a striker and yeah. like he does. And you always want your striker there don't you Sean I mean I get a bit fed up when centre forwards come and pull out and wait for the cut back that's for the on running midfielders you get yourself in that position how many times have we seen Manchester City players tapping the ball in from two yards away and that's what he does you can talk about, oh, he doesn't have many touches outside the box, all you like, but the most important thing is when the ball is coming in, right place, right time, finish it off. And he does it more than anyone. Yeah, and that was his first touch in the penalty area all evening. Now, you felt, obviously, Benton Core right at the end of that run could have done more. He was on a yellow card. He pulled himself out, and then we saw what happened after that. Yeah, exactly. It was... Uh... This, I mean, this is his yellow card early on in the game and it was a bad one. I mean, a bad tackle, definitely deserved a yellow card. So he can have no complaints there. You see he's late, he's high on Phil Foden and it's a bad tackle. This is the goal. I mean, Romero is at fault to start with, but look at this. This is, it, it's a, a challenge of a man that's on a yellow card that can't do anything. He lets him go. And when you're a manager sat there thinking... Oh, if my players are, are on the pitch and they can't make a challenge, then you probably have to make the change. You, you know, you have to think, I've got to bring him off. And I can understand that. I can't understand, though, his reaction. Well, I can understand frustration, don't get me wrong, but that's, that's over the top. Um, so a tricky one for, for Postacoglu, the manager, seeing that happening, conceding the first goal because your man's already on a yellow card. And, uh, and it just shows you the importance of discipline. Right at the early, early part of the game, he didn't need to tackle Foden like that. And if he hadn't, then they wouldn't have gone 1-0 down and he wouldn't have got brought off. So maybe he needs to learn a lesson as well. Interesting. Um, Edison, uh, fourth time he had to go off. I mean, is there a braver keeper around in this situation, Sean? No, he, he always seems to put his body in harm's way to stop. But this is he, he doesn't even look at Romero, his eyes are solely on the ball. I can imagine he knows the hit coming, but he can't do much about it. And that, that is a, a, a painful one. I feel like Romero has to go for it. He's, I don't think he's meant to hit him, but that hip has literally took him out of the game. And then you get this frustration from a man. That's just emotional. I feel like he wanted to stay on the pitch. He didn't want to come off the game of that magnitude. He wanted to play more of it, but I think they took him off personally for, for precaution. They got another big game on the weekend coming up. They've got an FA Cup final to prepare for. So I think it's, it's, it's more in terms of that. But I, I don't mind stuff like that when you're getting taken off and you're showing frustration. I think that's different to say the Benton Core situation where he should understand, first of all, that it's tactical. You obviously didn't make that tackle, like Mo said, based on your yellow card, which cost us a goal. Whereas that is just precaution and that's just a man that doesn't want to come off the pitch because he feels like he's fine. Yeah, yeah, I like that attitude as well, I must admit. Not necessarily showing the world that you're frustrated, but you believe you're OK. The doctor or physio have, have checked you. 
You've then played on for another five minutes. You know, you've shown some nice touches. You've still been calm. Um, I think he's certainly not frustrated with Pep Guardiola. That's a medical decision why he's come off. And we get it. You know, you've, you've got to be safe rather than sorry in this day and age. I get that. And he has had a nasty blow to the, to the head. But he's already been checked and he's been allowed to continue. So why the change of mind after another five minutes? I'd be frustrated as well. And he was frustrated. But I'm sure he'll get his place back. The other frustration is obviously the goalkeeper had a massive part to play. And of course, he'll be sitting there thinking, I should have been making that save. I would have made that save. I'd be the hero. You know, things like that. That's what you're remembered for in your career. Ortega will be remembered forever by Manchester City fans for making a save that possibly has just won them the title now. That was such a monumental moment. And so I can understand the frustration of Edison. I really can. And that's what you call a winner. That's what you call a champion. Here's a save. I mean, it's an awful mistake from Manchester City. And it's... Yeah, it's... It's not the normal type of save. I was thinking he'd take a step back and then almost run at... Uh, son but he actually runs back and then just stops and stops and stops and makes himself big it's a very very good save I think near post finish here just slide it near post there Sean yeah I actually Pat Guardiola says everything this is yeah. brilliant isn't it <laughs> yeah, I felt like when he, he, he has gone through Son there he sees the keeper but when he puts his head down he hasn't visualised and there, that shows how much there Pep is appreciated. Just doesn't give kisses out lightly, Pep, does he? No, no, he definitely doesn't. Maybe the odd hug, but not the kiss. <laughs> just, he deserves his kiss tonight, oh, doesn't he? he? he I deserves, mean, what a huge moment that is in the title race. Them. Yeah, it, it's massive. I think that was about the 86th, 87th minute when he made that save. And OK, there was going to be another 10, I think, 9 or 10 minutes injury time. So there would have been time for Manchester City to, to maybe get the winner. But, I mean, this... <laughs> This literally could be the biggest moment in the, in the title race. It's, it's, it's massive. It's like scoring a goal at the other end. It's just huge. And uh, he, get, he deserves every little bit of that kiss off Pep Guardiola. I have to agree. I don't think Son lifts his head up. After he runs through, he looks and then his head's down. I don't think he sees, like Mo said, that he's backed off and stopped and not moved again. Yeah. And he's played it so close to his to his feet he can it's almost like he just groin stretches and blocks it he doesn't go all the way down does he no he doesn't he stays big stays tall for a long period of time that I used to hate it when goalkeepers did that I wanted them to almost commit make a move almost it can make your mind up as well sometimes you'll tease them and try to make them charge you if you take a big touch and think they think I can, I'm taking a big touch here and they might come and dive at your feet so you can do little things to try to make the goalkeeper make a move. But if he stays big and stays tall and stands long, very difficult as a centre-forward. As I say, I think Son, who I do rate as a finisher as well, he's, normally you'd, you'd, you wouldn't want anyone else in that position. But looking at the chance again, I think a little slide into the near post was, was probably the finish there. And, uh, and he's fluffed his lines. Can you imagine the Arsenal fans at that moment? They oh. probably thought, this is it. Yeah. How many times have they seen Son score in those situations in other games? Exactly. And if you'd asked all of those Arsenal fans, as I say, I'm sure, do a poll on who, uh, who they want running through one-on-one -on -one in that team, you'd probably want Son. So it was uh, a big moment, massive moment in the title race, huge repercussions everywhere you look. Um, but I suppose it's not over yet. They still might have another bite of the cherry. And it was a big four minutes because at the other end, as you mentioned, we saw the celebration from Doku once he'd been fouled and the penalty was awarded. Yeah, and from this frame, but how about this ball from Phil Foden? It, it, it's that good. It actually slows down for <laughs> Doku to get there. And then that little shimmy there, we know Doku does a lot. And when he gets that and the foot goes in, he's, he's, he's always going to win that penalty. But like you said, the, the, the celebration after just showed how much it meant not only to him but where they're going in the direction and the position they're in and now that like everyone's saying they're in pole position now so that penalty event but the cool and calmness one step and the fact that Harlan said for the first time didn't think he didn't think about it now I would definitely be thinking about it if I'm nervous so it, it, it shows a lot that even a guy with 60 odd plus goals in two seasons can still get nervous at a moment like that then anybody can and he will be the first player ever in his first two seasons in the Premier League to win the golden boot in both he's up to 27 league goals now just the 38 this season after the 52 last season <laughs> in all competitions
I still smile when I'm saying those things. Quite incredible, yeah. It was looking like quite a tight race, wasn't it, for the Golden Boot this season? And all of a sudden, in the last two or three weeks, he's just surged clear, and now it looks like a procession. So, um, as I said, he gets more chances than the most. He's one of the, the, the better finishers in the league. He's got attributes that sometimes you just simply can't defend against. If you hang one up onto that back post... What can you do? I mean, he's so big, so powerful, such a good header of the ball. He's got so many strings to his bow, and, uh, and sometimes he's undefendable. Interesting. Well, the reaction of the night was Pep Guardiola there when Stefan Ortega made that huge save. Let's see if he's calmed down and composed himself after the win. Here is the city manager. Well, congratulations, Pep. With the stakes so high, your team have delivered once more. So how do you sum up that performance from your players tonight? Uh, good, so... This type of games, emotions are there. You cannot perform your best, and apart from the quality, for the intensity that the opponent put today in the game, because they were playing, of course, for try to qualify for the Champions League. It's an exceptional team, physicality, well managed with the ball, without the ball. So we knew it was difficult, but in the bad moments we were there, our keepers did the job, and um, and at the end, in the right moment, we punished them. Yeah, you say your keeper doing the job. I mean, just how season defining. Could that Stefan Ortega save have been? No, I've done it since I arrived. When I just arrived, we saw how standard level of the keeper it is. So we know that he making incredible, incredible saves, but many, many times. So and uh, yeah, in the moment we were yeah one or two actions because they are so fast with Kulusevski, with uh, Madison, with Johnson, with Son. So. They had a top fantastic play in the, the runners with uh, with Porro, with uh, with uh, Saar, and have a lot, a lot of weapons to speed behind mm-hmm. for the defenders. So it's an exceptional team, exceptional. So, and uh, yeah, we knew we had to suffer, and we give us a life one more, few more days for the last game of the season at home. All four members of your attacking unit combined to find that breakthrough goal just after the break. So what were the instructions to the players at at half-time to find that? What did you need them to do slightly differently? (coughs) They were playing for the consequences of the result. When you play football thinking about the consequences, you're going to lose the Premier League, you cannot perform this level. But (coughs) he's a human being, so I can understand the pressure is there. Not even Arsenal play exceptional against United, so they know that they don't win there, they are not going to win the Premier League and play with that pressure. It will be the same against West Ham, it will be the same. Mm. So we'll feel the pressure and we look at Aston Villa a few years ago, 0-2, 15 minutes left. Sergio Aguero, against QPR, you know, 1-2, 88, 89 minutes. So the motions are there. If you don't play for that big, big, big achievement, you play better, but it's normal. So. You have to, that's why we talk about, okay, everyone himself has to put, relax and perform what you have to do. That's all. Yeah, I guess it's it's striking that balance between <coughs> relaxing but also being hyper aware of the consequences. You've mentioned the Aston Villa game there. Rodri also mentioned it as he came off the pitch. So that pleases you, does it, to hear the players, you're touching distance, but they're all too yeah. aware of how quickly this can still get away from you. Yeah, they felt it. They felt it there and they know it there. They are not celebrating absolutely anything. They were happy, of course, relief, because we wanted to arrive the last game, but we know we have a lot of job to do, a lot. And we have people who are going to support us, of course, but uh, now it's Kudus, Antonio, Bowen, uh, War Pros with the set pieces, Sosek. And, you know, and, and, and there are tricks in a football game. Everything can happen. Everything can happen. It's nothing for granted. And uh, what I said before, to win Wimbledon, the tennis player said the serve to win Wimbledon is the most difficult one, the most difficult one. And this is what you have to, you know it, you live it, and that's why prepare well, f- completely focus, and uh, yeah, try it, <laughs> try it again. Thanks, Pep. We look forward to seeing you someday. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Ciao. Well, he'll try and make history. He won four consecutive titles at Barcelona as a player. He's now going to try and do it with Manchester City. As a manager, um, talking of history, just want to clear something up for Michael because when we were talking about Erling Haaland, stats <laughs> oh, don't tell everyone. No, no, he he will be the first player to score uh, to get the Golden Boot in his first two seasons in the Premier League. And you said, yeah. "Didn't I do that, Steve?" <laughs> yeah, I did. And then our stats man said, "No, you'd already played two games the previous season, oh. so it doesn't count." Okay, 
That's pernickety. It, it's, it's harsh. That's pernickety. But I'm only, I'm only relaying <laughs> I'm, the information. For two first seasons. That's a scandal. <laughs> You'd be already, but it was your third I'd season. already played 110 minutes to get this Which season. Which was your first season, Tanaka. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like assists, but... <laughs> OK. Yeah. Um, what was interesting there was, in the first half, he said that his players were playing for the consequences of the results. It's good to know after all these titles, they're still human, these City players, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I think to play the way they do and go through what they have, they kind of have to be. I think they, they have to be level-headed. They can't get away with their self and, like Roger said, think the title's ready theirs. They have... But like you said at half-time, they, they looked unusually nervous tonight. It even got to them, didn't it? Well, you're going to. I think when you see Arsenal doing what Arsenal are doing, I don't think Arsenal played that great at Old Trafford, but they still won the game. And when you see teams that you're challenging doing things like that, you kind of got to feel that it's going to go till that last point. And if you mess up, the chances are you'll lose, lose the title. So in many, res- in many respects and ways, I, I totally understand it. I am a little bit surprised by it because of what they've come through and what they've already achieved. And I think we all went on and highlight the fact that they're used to these big moments. They should be able to handle the pressure. But... I still think it can it can get to you, and it it has to. You, you're human, like you can't. I don't feel like you can escape it. No, yeah, I I totally agree. I I like that line from Pep Guardiola. We we were playing the consequences. It made me think, and yeah, and, and that's exactly how Arsenal play. That's exactly how City played today. It's it's all, almost one of those don't want to make a mistake type of um, attitudes instead of free flowing. Just just play the, the way you normally do. Uh, the bigger the prize, the more you maybe think about it a little bit. So, yeah, I, I get that. And maybe, you know, we're all looking at the West Ham game thinking West Ham have got nothing to play for, everything to play for for City. Of course, it's going to be one way. But with all the examples that we've just reeled off, maybe it's not over just yet. Who knows? Um, one worry tonight was Kevin De Bruyne going off. Um, really saw one from Pape Sarr and his, his Achilles. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Pepe saw meant it, to be honest with you, but the way Kevin takes the ball and kind of cuts across him sort of thing and runs in his path kind of kills him, but he does get him nasty down the back of the Achilles. I actually thought he would have got taken off. You very rarely see Kevin go down and stay down and scream the way he, he was in, in that situation. So happily and luckily, he managed to play a few minutes, but he got subbed off, I think, in many ways, Hopefully, fingers crossed, more for precaution. Yeah, it looked, obviously it was, it was a blow um, as opposed to anything else, which is normally you know, painful, but not um, too bad. Um, you saw the stamp on the, the back of the Achilles there. I thought the yellow card was the right decision. I, didn't, I agree, I didn't think it was intentional, but it did stop an attack. Um, and of course, he did foul him. So, um, But it was quite nice to see Kevin De Bruyne get up continue to play for a little while before he came off. So I'd be surprised um, seeing all that if he wasn't fit to, to play at the weekend. Well, City would certainly hope so. Aside from the title story tonight, there's a brilliant one, of course, for Aston Villa. Spurs had to win, they haven't, and that their Player of the Season awards, that is on social media. Unai Emery on hearing the full-time whistle at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. What a brilliant achievement. As we mentioned on last night's show, he inherited a team one point above the relegation zone. His brief was to keep Aston Villa in the Premier League and then he led them to seventh and into Europe. He's now led them into the Champions League. It's only the third ever season they'll compete in Europe's top competition. He was your manager of the year. It's an astonishing achievement and brilliant emotions and scenes from Villa's end of season awards there. What a picture that was. What a picture. You know, the joy, um, long season, lots of work that he's put in. He's the hot, most hard-working manager out there. Um, but look at that for emotion. Not just him, but the players around him. And um, yeah, absolutely fabulous. Well deserved. You know, I think they've been really entertaining. They've had an incredible home record, certainly for the first two-thirds of the season they were almost unbeatable and um, I'd be really excited if I was an Aston Villa fan not just because of the results of this season but I just think they've got a bit of money behind them they're now going to get the the riches that comes with the Champions League they've got a good squad anyway they've had a few injuries I think they can be better anyway I think they've got a brilliant manager that's going to take them to the next level and we look at teams like Manchester United Newcastle Tottenham and Chelsea and all these teams that are pushing to get to the top 
Aston Villa have to be in that conversation now. They've proved it this year and they've got a lot going for them that they could go and push on again next year. Yeah, congratulations uh, to Aston Villa. The last team to beat Manchester City and that was in 2023. City called it a cup final tonight. They've won it. It is in their hands going to the final day of the season. If they beat West Ham, they will be champions for a record fourth time in a row when they can pop the champagne corks, but not until the job is done on Saturday. But Tottenham have done Aston Villa's job at the end of season Player of the Year awards. Emmy Martinez leading the celebrations for just the third time in their history. They're in Europe's top competition. It's their first top four finish since 1995. They're playing in the Champions League next season. Tottenham aren't, and as I say, they still need a point away at Sheffield United on the final day to make sure they're definitely in the Europa League next season. Here is what Ange Postacoglu thought about it all. Well, Ange, on the whole, a pretty tightly fought game, but ultimately, where do you think you've come short there in the end? Uh, yeah, it was a tight game, I guess, uh, in the big moments. Uh, you know, we, uh, we weren't able to capitalise and they were. Uh, beyond that, I suppose in the, in the first half, particularly tight, that extra man in midfield looked to be making all the difference. Yeah, I thought we were well in the game the whole time. I mean, uh, if it had won nil, we had a great chance to, to go on all. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a tight game all along, obviously. Yeah, at the end, they were chasing the game, so they got a bit more space. But um, yeah, up until that point, I thought we were well in it. Yeah, do you think with the opportunities you'll have, particularly when it was just 1-0, there is an element of feeling with coming away with a bit of a missed opportunity tonight with those opportunities that you had in front of goal? Yeah, absolutely. We lost the game. So, yeah, it was, uh, we had opportunities within the game to, um, yeah, to punish them. Uh, ahead of tonight, we talked about ultimately the ambition of this football club, wanting to go on and emulate the kind of success that Manchester City has had. Tonight, you had a chance to really measure yourselves against them. What conclusions have you drawn with that? Nothing earth-shattering that I didn't know before the game. Uh, yeah, we've still got some work to do. Some work? I mean, how, how close are you when you're looking ahead to next season, the work that needs to be done? Just, we need to do some work to catch up. It does mean that you are now officially out of that race for the Champions League places. What's your immediate reaction to that? Well, we've lost the game, so I'm disappointed. Yeah. But to, to have been in the race for Champions League football for such a long portion of this season, is that something that you can take pride of at, at this stage? No, not right now because we've lost. So, uh, you know, we'll assess the season. Uh, we've still got one more game to go. Um, so we'll go to Sheffield United and uh, we've got to make sure we, uh, we finish with a, with a strong performance there and then you know, we'll assess the season there. And would you feel fifth is a fair reflection of where you're at? I think wherever you finish is a fair reflection of where you're at. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. OK, that was his interview. Here is what he's just said in his post-match press conference. I think the last 48 hours has revealed to me the foundations are fairly fragile, mate. So. How do you mean I just, that's what I feel. Is that the I just think that's, like I said, the last 40 hours has revealed a fair bit to me and that's all right. That just means oh, we've got to back, go back to the drawing board with some things. Not interested, mate. Don't care. Outside, inside, everywhere. It's been an interesting exercise. It's just one my observations, mate. I'm not going to tell you because it's for me. Well, I'm the one that's got to do it. So, you know, you can make your own fairly uh, sort of uh, accurate assessment of what's happened. And I understand I'll probably misread the situation as to what I think is important in, uh, in your endeavour to become a winning team. But that's OK. Um, that's why I'm here. Wow, that is really interesting. In the last 48 hours, I've seen foundations that are really fragile inside and outside of the club. Yeah, I'm desperate for him to reveal a little bit more. And I was scratching my head to think what he's referring to then, but he doesn't seem happy, does he? Um, I wonder what that can be, whether he's had a meeting with the people above, um, whether he started looking ahead to next season already, which would surprise me if he had. Yeah, that's a head scratcher, that one. But there's certainly something that's, uh, that's you know, affecting him and, and annoying him at the moment. So that'll obviously come out in, uh, in the hours and days to come, but... Not a happy man, though. No, in terms of foundations, 
do you think that might mean the, the, the recruitment going forward to try and give him a squad to go higher? Um, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit like like Mo. I, I thought everything for me was going well. Obviously, they're not where they want to be in the Premier League, but in terms of... Well, they lost five it, the last six, haven't they? So. Yeah, but if you, you listen to the, the fans, the Spurs fans, that, they're all delighted. They all turn up now rather than giving their tickets away. They enjoy the football that's being played there. Of course, you don't want to lose, but at least if you lose, you lose having a goal and not just sitting back as to what they were used to and still kind of losing. So we knew it wasn't going to be easy for him in his first season. He'd done better than everybody expected off the back in being in this position to challenge for the Champions League. And we knew it would take one or two more transfer windows, just like Ledley said, to get roughly to where he wants to be. So I just assume, right, you take the positives away from this. You make your transfers or your signings who you want to bring in and who you want to go out. And then you try and improve from what you've done this year into next season. But that, what he said there, sounds like he's just not happy with absolutely anything at the minute. Mm. Yeah, because when you think foundations, what can it, what can it be um, that's changed in the last 48 hours? It can't be the playing squad. It can't be the facility. Well, unless the, it's a meeting either. Well, exactly. Oh. It, can't be a, it can't be the playing squad. It the... The training ground is probably the best in the country. The, the stadium is the best in the country. Um, got to be something. What did he say? There? We have different ideas on what makes a winning team. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be behind the scenes, meeting with the you know chief scouts or chairman or whoever it might be in terms of recruitment or or whatever. I'm not sure, but anyway, that will come out. I'm sure over the next few days because that seems like it's a very big story about to brew. Mm. If they get a point on Sunday, which we would, we would hope they would at the relegated bottom club, Sheffield United, they're guaranteed Europa League, given the fact they haven't had any European football this season and they lost Harry Kane. How would that sit with you? If I was a Spurs fan, I'd be happy in terms of, like I said, the progression of the style of football they're playing, how exciting it is. But on the other hand, do they have the squad deep enough to deal with Thursday, Sunday? Because I thought Villa would have struggled, but Unai managed to work that magnificently to, on both accounts. I don't think Spurs have a deep enough team to do that and achieve, accomplish both. Maybe that's the foundations. Maybe. But when you look at it in bare facts, I mean, they're about half a dozen points ahead of where they were last season already with another game. Let's surmise that they go and beat Sheffield United. Nine points improvement is a good one. Notwithstanding that, they've also got a manager now that are playing a style of football that the, the fans really like. So it's not just attractive football, but it's, it's more productive as well. So you have to stay, say it's a step forward from last season on both counts. So, yes, if I was a Tottenham fan, I'd be much more happy uh, with, the, with the direction of the club. Um, however, from what he just said there, I'd be... Oh, we're starting to progress and now all of a sudden it looks like the manager's uh, not very happy at all. So again, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but I think it's been a very progressive season for Spurs. Yeah, particularly, as I say, losing Harry Kane, a lot of teams would, would go backwards after that. Yeah. You, you would, especially if you lose a player, like you said, like him, that basically against, if you look at his record against City, when City have played there, he's that man that creates a chance when everything's going against Spurs. And they, I think they've managed superbly well. Um, to do what they're doing. The right players have stepped up at the right time. Of course, they went on a little bad run, but a lot of the top five clubs have had that little wobble and Spurs just had that, as I suppose, in many ways at the wrong time where all the rest of the teams have kicked on. So, um, Sheffield United, I suppose, will be one of the games with something on it on the final day of the season, but the main two, of course, will be at the Etihad and at the Emirates. And Arsenal just have to do their job. Everton... Nothing to play for, but they have the fourth best defence uh, in the Premier League uh, away at the Emirates. They have to win that Arsenal and then hope, hope West Ham can get something at the Etihad. I mean, it's great, isn't it? As I say, it's only the 10th time in the Premier League era we're going to sit here at the start of the final day and not know who the champions definitely are. No, it's great when it goes to the last game and this title race has deserved to go to the last game. They've both been incredible teams this season. Arsenal... It's going to be very, very likely that they're put in one of the most incredible seasons the most and, and, yeah, walk away with nothing. 
Um, I've said before that it's just a nightmare for a team like Arsenal, a team like Liverpool over the last decade, to only get their hands on one league, Liverpool, in the last decade. But that's the competition now. You know, this Manchester City team is one of the best teams we've ever seen. Certainly in my lifetime, it is. Um, so, you know, the bar keeps getting raised. Arsenal have stepped up to that this season. They've still got a puncher's chance in the last game. However, it really does look like Manchester City are going to prove too strong once again. But again, if you're an Arsenal fan, you're excited about the future. This team is going somewhere and improving fast. Do you think, Belmo, like after two seasons like this, if they don't win it this time, next season, they might feel the jet lag of being pushed so far to their maximum and then getting pipped at the line? Well, if they can sustain it, if they can sustain it, this Manchester City, I mean, what everybody needs in the Premier League, let's get it right, is Pep Guardiola to toddle off. That's what it was. <laughs> the longest, we certainly don't, as neutrals. Well, so. yeah, sorry, I mean the other teams, the fans of other teams. Yeah. That's what everyone needs. As long as he's in charge, he's the best manager in the world, isn't he? They, they, you're almost playing for second place at the moment. A couple of teams have snapped at his heels and snapped at his heels there, but really, he's not going anywhere. Um, and... As soon as he leaves the club, then there might be question marks. Then the likes of Arsenal have got to be there to pounce at that time. Liverpool have got to keep this, uh, this um, standard as well, and other teams. But the way they play, that manager is just, he's gold dust, isn't he? He's just incredible. And, uh, and I think most teams are looking at it and thinking, he can't last forever. Might he go at the end of this season if he wins it? Might he do one more year? He's only got one more year on his contract, so... We shall see, but I think that's everybody's best hope at the minute because he just keeps rolling on. Even the most nervous City fan isn't nervous for Sunday, are you? I'm most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you. Uh, Arsenal fans will still believe the last team that weren't top on the final day to win it were Arsenal, but they're going to have to defy form and history. It's advantage Manchester City. They're one step away from four in a row. From the three of us, take care. We'll see you. Thoughts about Tottenham Hotspurs? They came flying out at the start of the season with a quite entertaining, quite foot-forward exciting football. With fresh tactics from the new coach Angie Postacogla, Spurs are quite different from the ultra-defensive mindset of Antonio Conte last season, which borders on the mundane and quite underwhelming play. Since then, they have petered out beginning around the middle of the season. They have been found out on multiple occasions, their openness and high line making for a lot of defensive errors. Add to that the unwillingness of the coach to compromise on the style of play which could probably be better with some kind of adaptational changes makes them vulnerable to attacks. That being said, they can be congratulated for challenging for a place in the Champions League, the fourth position, fighting with Aston Villa. Even though this results means they stay in the fifth position, it will be interesting to see what direction they take next season. Thoughts about Manchester City as if anybody needs to be reminded of, Manchester City has been the best team in England for a while now and one of the best in the world. It is particularly impressive the way they seem to reserve their energy, skill and fight for the ending stages of the play season. With just a game remaining after this match, they are within reach yet again of another unbelievable record for Premier League titles in a row. This at the end of a record equaling treble last year is mind-boggling. Also kudos to Arsenal who have sometimes lead and now tails them so closely giving City no room to be less than perfect. The only blib in their season is the loss to Real Madrid at the Champions League quarter-final, although they lose the match in a penalty shootout. You would not bet on them not to win against West Ham at home in the final game. 